How is everybody? Sweaty? Are you hot? I'm like, I'm burning up. It's all right. That's, that's good because I, I, I wanted to give you a, a, a display of our new baptism shirts anyway, so I wasn't sure if I would take that off or not, but I'm going to take it off. We're, today we're going to talk about raised to life, and the staff has been on me for a long time to get baptism shirts, and, and uh, we finally got some. So this is what they're going to look like. This is what they look like, and um, decided, you know what, we're going to talk about that today, and, and uh, then somebody just completely blew up the whole, the whole service, and now I only have a few minutes, but <clears throat> it's all right. It's good. You've already heard the best part of it, and we'll get back to that, but I want to, Lord in mercy, I do hear some kind of weird ringing sound. Can anybody hear that? <laughs> TJ? Where's TJ? Can we get rid of that somehow? Anyway, we are, um, we're, we're going to talk about this idea of being raised to life, and and, and I, I want to. I'm going to preach to you from a passage that I've that, that I've spent a lifetime studying. I've I've looked at for for a long time, and I could probably spend eight hours on it easily, and never even come close to to talking about it all. But the truth is, this is what it all boils down to. What it all boils down to is that God calls us into life out of death. God calls us out of death into life so that we can experience life in Him. Amen? Who all wants to know what the ringing sound was? Was it Hal's ears, hearing aids? That's what I thought it might be. I've spent a lot of elders' meetings listening to that same sound, so I kind of thought that might be what it is, but I didn't think it would make it all the way up here, so praise the Lord for hearing aids and all of that. How people who are, he- who are wearing those hearing aids can't hear that sound is baffling to me for any of you who wear hearing aids, you know, it's a, it, anyway, <laughs> oh. Somebody's going to give us a review online and say, that preacher was all over the place today. He didn't, he didn't know where he was going. I'll just say amen. Matthew chapter 3, verse 13. says, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. That's John the Baptist, by the way. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? At the very beginning of Jesus' ministry, Jesus came to John. He, he <laughs> Understand this, Jesus was about 30 years old when this happened. Jesus had lived a very obscure life, and other than a tiny little spot that we have in the book of Luke, we have no, uh, outside of his birth, the record of his birth, we have no record of Jesus' life during this time except for one little moment when he was about 12 years old, and then here he shows up on the scene again. And he shows up on the scene coming to John the Baptist. Now, what we have to understand a little bit about on this is that we need to understand that John the Baptist was sent by God, was called by God to be the forerunner for Jesus, to be the one that would, that would blaze the trail, that would ring the bell, that would sound the alarm that the Messiah is coming, he is coming, and then the Messiah comes to him to be baptized. It's an interesting thing. It baffles the mind, and it baffled the mind of John the Baptist. He's like, wait a minute. I know who you are. I know why you're here. I, I, and, and, but yet you come to me to be baptized just like everybody else? Like, that makes no sense. He knew that he was the Lamb of God sent to 
pay the sin, pay for the sins of the people. He knew that he was the Messiah, and yet he comes to him to be baptized, and John's mind is baffled. He doesn't understand. In verse 15, Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. To fulfill all righteousness is a phrase that I have wrestled with for many, many years. This word righteousness in the, in the original Greek can also mean justification. It's the justifying of something. It's the making right of something. It's the correcting the course of something. And, and in this making things right, Jesus lives out for us an example. He, he, he says, let it be this way so that all righteousness can be fulfilled. So that everything that is right can be demonstrated for everyone so they will see it and know what to do and know how to step into it when it becomes available. Verse 16 and 17 say this, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water and at that moment heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. This is the moment of Jesus' baptism by the by John the Baptist. John the Baptist was baptizing the Jewish people in a baptism of repentance. Jesus needed no repentance. He had never sinned. He needed no forgiveness. He had never done anything to warrant forgiveness. And yet he came and he demonstrated what it looks like to lay one's life down. And when he comes up out of the water, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God descends on him like a dove and lands on him. And that is the beginning. This this launches the beginning of Jesus' ministry into the world filled with the Holy Spirit. And, And here's a point that I want you to make sure you get a hold of. Is that Jesus came to show us the normal Christian life. You see, Jesus didn't do what he did for his sake. Jesus did what he did for our sake so that we could watch and see, so that we could experience, so that we could understand. He gave us the perfect example of what it looks like to live the normal Christian life. And he began his Christian life by coming to be baptized, by submitting himself to that which... The Father had called him to. You see, coming to salvation is an act of submission. It's an act of laying down my life so that God can take it up. It's an act of dying so that I can be raised to life. I can't be raised to life if I'm already living in my own power, if I'm already living in my own preferences, if I'm already living in my own way, I can't switch to the way. Come on. In Acts chapter 2, right after Pentecost, the Holy Spirit has come. Jesus has been crucified. He's been buried. He rose again. He showed himself to his disciples and to many, many others. And then he ascends into heaven out of their sight. And then he tells while he's there, he told them, stay in this place and wait for the one that the Father has promised, the one that I will send to you, the Holy Spirit himself. Because you need him. You're going to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and to Samaria, and to the ends of the earth, and you can't do it by yourself. You can't do it all alone, and you can't do it in your way or under your power. You need the Spirit of God in you. So he says, wait here, stay here, don't move. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit comes in power. They say that they, they begin to uh, move around. They, they, the fire, licks of fire. They say it looks like licks of fire coming out of their heads. I wonder what that dove looked like when it lit on Jesus at his baptism. I wonder if it looked similar. 
Because it's the same Holy Spirit coming upon them that came upon Jesus on that day. That He demonstrated for us three years prior. Now it's happening to His people. Now it's happening to His followers as they give their lives to Him and submit themselves. It's happening to them. And, and, and they ask Peter, they're cut to the heart. Conviction comes. When we come face to face with God, we are confronted with our own sin. And conviction comes and we have to decide, what, what, what? What must I do? Understand, I didn't say guilt comes. You see, guilt is not an emotion from God. Guilt is an emotion. Guilt and shame are emotions that drive us down and drive us back. Conviction is something that comes that drive us up and pull us forward and say, what should I do? If God just came to make us all feel guilty, we would never ask him, what can I do? We would say, oh God, don't kill me. Don't squash me. Don't destroy me. Let me hide. Let me me cower. No, but instead, when conviction comes, we step forward and we step out and we open ourselves and we say, God, what must we do? What do we, what's the step, what, what can I do? How can I make this right? And it's by grace It's by grace. You need to understand that. You have to understand it. It's by the grace of God that he makes this available to us. So anything else that I talk about after this is not works. It's response. We're not working to earn God's salvation and grace. We are responding to the grace and salvation that God has already offered to us. And he says, by faith, take hold of this, and here's how you do it. In obedience to me, here's what we do, right? That's what obedience is. It's doing what you're told. It's doing what you have been given an opportunity to do. Come on. So he says this in verse 36, it says, therefore, let all Israel, Peter stands up, Peter's preaching this first sermon, and they came to him and said, what must we do? He says, let all, all, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah, both Lord, who is master of all, has authority over all, is in control of all, and also Messiah, the one who has laid himself down for you, the Christ, the one who has become your sacrifice, your propitiation for your sin, your payment. How many of you know you can't pay for your own sin? You just can't. Well, you could, but it's an eternal payment. What Jesus did for us on the cross that day, he did once and for all, for all, so that we all could have him. And he says, and and that's what I believe they understood there. So in verse 37, it says, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. And said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? What shall we do? How do we respond to this? We recognize our sin. We are convicted of our sin. We want rid of our sin. We want to be set free. We want into this relationship with God. What can we, how can we get there? What do we do? There's two things that we get to do, and then God takes over. Number one, in verse 38... Peter replied, repent. Repent. What does repent mean? In in the Greek, repent is the word metanoia. Meta meaning to change, to transform, right? Metamorphosis, to change. Noia is knowledge, how you think, the knowledge that you're basing your decisions on, the things that you are believing in. He says, change your thinking. For them, that would have said, change that I am believing and trusting in, keeping the law and keeping the rules of the Jewish church and, and, and fulfilling all of my obligations to the Mosaic law, which they never did, which they never accomplished, which they never could, because no one can. And change my thinking to, he is Lord. He is Messiah. 
He is the one who has came to save me and to set me free from my sin that I could never pay for myself. And now he is my Lord. He is my Savior. He is the one who I follow. He's the one who I look to for my instructions, for my orders, for my life. He has created me for that purpose. And now he's given me. You see, all that Jesus was in the Gospels was the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. Everything that had been offered through the law and through the prophets in the Old Testament was fulfilled in Jesus. That he satisfied all the things that the law was trying to satisfy. All the payment, all the sacrifices, all the offerings, all the things that they had to bring on a regular basis, he was satisfied. He satisfied all of that. And now, by grace that was offered, and through faith, we step into it. How many of you know faith is an action? Faith is an action verb. It's something that we do, that we move into. So he says, repent and be baptized. Be baptized. Now they were very familiar with baptism. The Jewish history, you know, baptism was a very large part of the Old Testament, even though we don't really see it that way or understand it fully. But the ceremonial washing was very clear to them. They understood it very clear. It was a part of their culture. John the Baptist had been baptizing, and many who were there had probably gone out to the Jordan, out to the wilderness, to be baptized, just as Jesus was, just as Jesus had demonstrated for us to do. And now Peter is saying, here's what you do. Repent, change your thinking. Let go of those old ways, let go of that old sin. Step into the forgiveness of the new Lord and the new Messiah. And then be baptized. Lay your life down into His. Because He laid His life down for you. You see, all baptism really is is a picture of of, of, of an event that happened when Jesus was taken down off the cross. He was delivered to the tomb and He was laid down. He laid there for three days, but on the third day, the glory of the Father came in and raised Him up. Now, we don't leave you in the water for three days. So, just in case you're wondering or worried. Because we're not trying to reenact what Jesus did. All we're trying to do is join into what Jesus did. Come on. Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, and into a new identity is what that means. Into the new identity that is Jesus Christ, the Lord and the Messiah. For, here's what you receive. So two things that we get to do, repent and be baptized. Things that we get to receive now. For the forgiveness of your sin. You receive the gift of forgiveness for your sin. Your sin is washed away. It dies with your old man. And it's washed away. That's called forgiveness. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You see, so much of the church has spent so much time and energy arguing about baptism when in fact we shouldn't be focused on the baptism. We should be focused on the result of the baptism, right? Like we, we, you, don't, you don't go over to your neighbor's house and say, ooh, that's a really nice sudded up car while he's washing it. But you might go by and say, ooh, that's a real shiny car now that it's clean, now that it's washed, now that it's sparkling, you see, we, we focus on the act and we forget about the result. God wants us to focus on the result. What is the result? The result is I am forgiven. I am set free. I am washed clean. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I am no longer stuck in slavery to my sin. I have been released by the Spirit of God. I have been given power that was promised on, uh, at the beginning of the book of Acts by Jesus himself when he said, wait here, I'm going to send you power from on high I've received that power that's the result 
when I receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. When we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, listen, a person, a body, a human being without a spirit in it is called a corpse. Guess what a church without the Holy Spirit in it is called? An empty building. You thought I'd say corpse, didn't you? It's a corpse. It's an empty building. It's a shell of what it is meant to be. Now that building might have people in it, but if those people aren't filled with the Holy Spirit, then we have a problem. Come on. Uh, doctor, we don't know. there's no heartbeat over here. Right? And we, we start doing CPR on, on, on the churches. It is up to every single one of us to be the heartbeat of the body of Christ. He has by grace given us that opportunity, and by faith we step into it out of obedience, because faith is obedience. Cody said worship is obedience. That's absolutely 100% right, and so is faith. Faith requires obedience. Faith without works is... Doctor, I think he's flatlined. <laughs> Dead. That's what James said. I mean, I didn't make that up. It's in the Bible. It's dead. So how do we step out? We do, in, 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 later on in, this, in, in the same chapter, a few verses further that I won't get to today, it, it, in 41 it says that, they, that they, they met together. I mean, it's on this page. I can just read it. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship of the breaking of bread and prayer. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. What did the apostles teach? They taught to repent and be baptized to come into this relationship that God had offered by grace. Through faith, we step into it. How do we step into it? Obedience, repentance, and baptism. That's how we step into it. Listen, I'm not preaching that you're saved just because you got baptized. Hello? Make sure no one ever misunderstands me on that being getting baptized without faith is just getting wet it's very inconvenient come on but faith exercised in baptism is death burial and resurrection that's what it is we enter into death burial and resurrection. Verse, uh, th verse 40 goes on and says, with many other words he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. And listen to this verse. Listen, listen to it. This, this one struck me. This one jumped. I mean, I've preached on this hundreds of times. I've taught this in so many places. This one jumped out at me in a whole new way this time. Those who accepted his message were baptized. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Those who accepted the message. Here's the thing. We can fight and argue and carry on about, you know, well, I don't know if it's, that's the right way or it's this way, right, whatever. No, just read the Bible and what it says, do that. And if you accept the message and you act on the message then he is both Lord and Messiah to you. Amen? In Romans chapter 4, verse 25, the Bible says, He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. For our righteousness. So that all things could, so that all righteousness could be fulfilled. That's what that justification right there means. That when we enter into righteousness with God, it's not because we started not sinning, or we started doing churchy things, or, or we started acting different, doing different. No, it's because we entered into a death burial, and resurrection with the one who died for us so that we might have it. Come on. 
Are you with me? I mean, I know this is, this is simple for, you know, people who have been around the church. I, I heard a thing, I heard a thing this, the other day that said, if, you're, if you've never been accused of, of, of making the gospel too simple, you're probably not really preaching the gospel. Because the truth is, the gospel is simple. God loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. How do we exercise our belief in him? By obeying his word and doing what he told us to do in the very first sermon, the very first altar call, the very first explanation of what he had just taken care of and done when Peter stood up and said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, out of the name of whatever else you were trusting in before. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the same gift that Jesus received at his baptism that he demonstrated for us, showed us so we could see what all righteousness fulfilled looks like. Come on. I don't know if I can make the gospel any simpler than that. I, I don't know that I could sum up the entire New Testament any better than that. Because that's ultimately what it all says. That we were dead in our sin. He came, died for our sin, rose again, invites us into that same death and resurrection so we can live with him forever. There, there was, that was another attempt. It's just that simple. We can turn it into anything that we want to. We can try to make it political. We can try to, you know, carry. <laughs> Listen, Jesus is not in the business of masks and vaccines and mandates and politicians. Jesus is in the, is in the, is in the business of salvation. He wants you to be saved from all of that. He wants you to be set free from the sin that so easily entangles us. And tears us up and takes us down. Every time that we do a baptism, we read this scripture in Romans 6 because it once again sums up the simplicity of the gospel, the good news. That when we come into a relationship with him, when we humble ourselves and give ourselves over and say, I'm not going to do it my way, I'm going to do it your way. What is your way? Repent and be baptized. That's his way. <laughs> into the name of Jesus is his way for the forgiveness of his sin because that's what he wants to give you so you can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit because that's what he wants for you. Are you with me? In Romans 6, 1, it says this, What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? <laughs> Listen, grace can't increase when it's given infinitely when it's given absolutely, when there is no limit to it. It's already been poured out. On the cross, it was poured out limitlessly. By no means. We are those who have died. How can we live in it any longer? Well, when do we die? Paul tells us. Paul explains it to us perfectly right here. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Once again, I feel the need to reiterate, just being baptized just gets you wet. It is the faith that brings you to obedience, that leads you to respond to the word of God when you have heard it, that saves you. You are saved by grace through faith. Faith is an action. Faith is taking action. God doesn't just save us so we can check off our block and have our fire insurance for eternity. God, he saves us so we can begin to live for him, to take action for him, to do what he has called us to do, to live the life that we were meant to live based on his plan, his desire, and his lordship, not ours. We are not the captains of our ship. We get to ride on the ship that was saved for us to take us through the storms. His name is Jesus. We get to be baptized into his name, into his death, into his burial, and raised into his resurrection. 
It's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me because I've been raised to life in him. Come on. Read your Bible. Find every place in your Bible that says in him. That's where you are if you're in him. That's what you have if you're in him. Are you with me? Come on. Verse 4 says, we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, because this was leading to something. This is leading to something. See, Jesus didn't just save us so we would be saved. He saved us so we could live into something. We too may live a new life. We too may live a new life. I'm going to give an opportunity right now that if you've never been baptized and you want to be the first recipients of our brand new, spanking new, don't do it for the t-shirt. I know Americans will do anything for a t-shirt. Do it out of faith, but the bonus is you'll get a t-shirt. That t-shirt is not the real bonus. The real bonus is you will get forgiveness from your sin and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and the power that God has poured out for you so that you can live the life that you were meant to live in Him. Amen? So, let's be bold. Let's be courageous. If you are convicted of your sin, if you are in that place where you say, I, I didn't know what to do with this. Well, I've just told you from the word of God, the living, breathing word of God that we know God's word is truth. And the truth will set you free. If you've never been baptized, I mean, how awesome would it be to be baptized on Halloween? When the rest of the world is out there celebrating like zombies and ghosts and death and witches and all, we're celebrating being raised to life. See, that's what we celebrate. We celebrate life. I'm gonna give a, I'm not gonna labor this for very long, I'm just gonna. If you've never been baptized and you wanna take a bold step for the Lord right now, we're not going to turn it into some big ceremony or anything. We're just going to get her done. Come on. We, 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 I mentioned this in the staff, in, in the pre-service meeting back there. I said, you know, should, I don't know. We're going to be talking about baptism. We don't have any lined up, but you think we ought to fill it up? Cody's like, yes, fill it up. So Jim filled it up. So just like in the, in, in the, in the book of Acts, when the Ethiopian eunuch is riding along with Philip, Philip is leaving this place. He's leaving this event. He's walking along, and an Ethiopian eunuch who was at that event is riding by. He's a rich person. He's in a chariot. He picks up a hitchhiker named Philip, who's an evangelist. And he's reading the book of Isaiah, and he, said, and he asks Philip, who, who's he talking about? I don't understand. Bible says that he explained everything about Jesus to him. I mean, this is hot off the press. And as they go along, the Bible says, he, it doesn't say what Philip taught him. It doesn't say what Philip said or anything, but it does give us the result of that conversation. It says, as they rode along, they came to some water and the Ethiopian eunuch said, stop the chariot. Here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? So the message that Philip gave him apparently was very similar to the message I just gave you. Well, guess what? In that room, we have water. If you've never been baptized, if you want to give your life to Christ and surrender to him right now, calling upon his name, the Bible says in, in the book of Acts later on when the apostle Paul is... is uh, I told you, I got to stop. But he says, 
Ananias says to the Apostle Paul, when the Apostle Paul had been blinded by Jesus, had been shut down, led into the city, prayed for by Ananias, received, it, 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 and, he, and, and he says, what are you waiting for? Get up and be baptized, calling on his name. That's what the Bible says in the book of Acts calling upon his name. In, in other words, it fulfills another place where the apostle Paul says, all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Well, he gives us how to call upon the name of the Lord. It is by submitting and surrendering yourself to him into a death, burial, and resurrection where you receive the forgiveness of sin and the gift of the Holy Spirit. We call it baptism. It's an act of surrender. So here we go. Is there anybody in this room that hasn't been baptized? Maybe you've been following Christ for a long time, but you haven't been baptized because nobody told you. I believe my life calling is to tell people this story. Would you boldly stand up and be baptized? Come on, Scott. Listen, we're going to take a little, we're going to take a, a, a minute. I know the, the kids are having fun back there. They're having like some kind of festival. This, this is Scott. Hold on. I want to introduce you. This is, this is Scott. Praise the Lord. I want to tell you how Scott got here. I didn't prepare for this, so I'm just flying off the cuff, but because I didn't know he was coming. He came here because back in the summer, we put a sign out in front and said, we're going to have VBS at this, this time in this day. And his little girl came to VBS, and through that relationship of come, bringing her to VBS, he ended up coming here the next Sunday, and here we are today. Amen? Is that right? Amen. God bless you. Hey, let's find him a shirt. Is there, the shirts are in that wall locker right back there. Can you get him a shirt and some, and some, and some shorts? Please wear shorts. <laughs> or keep your pants on. Take your wallet out. I don't care. Whatever you do. Anybody else? I mean, it is nasty outside. There's nowhere to go anyway. Who cares? Let it rain. Let's not, I mean, we get in such a rush. There's, you know, if you're itching to go, just go ahead. You can go. I mean, you're not, you're not, you're free in the Lord. Praise Jesus. Come on. Let's celebrate communion together. And listen, in, in, in this communion, what are we celebrating? We're celebrating that thing which we celebrate that's brought us, that raised us to life. We're celebrating the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Listen, at, at any point while we're still here, while, while this is happening, at any point you, you just feel convicted and, and compelled to come, you just come. We'll stay here and baptize all day if we need to. We celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection because that is what saved us. Jesus, that is the picture of grace. That is who he is. That's what he did for us. And because of it, we have this opportunity. Would you receive the body of Christ? I'm just going to assume that everybody else here is baptized and, and everybody else here has accepted, accepted Christ, received his forgiveness, received the gift of the Holy Spirit. If that's not you, then I'm sorry. And we want to help you. Please don't. Please let us know. But here's what I do know. Is that in the book of Isaiah, the Bible says that it is by his stripes that we are healed. It is by his blood that we are restored. We prayed for healing for, for Josh Carl uh, earlier. We, we continue to pray for him. We're praying for healing for everyone who is sick, everyone who is 
hurting, everyone who is in need, and there are many. We have a long, long list. But listen, it is the blood of Christ that gives us the hope. <laughs> it gives us the hope to overcome. It gives us the hope to understand that we can pray for healing because His healing is in the blood. Amen? I invite you to receive the blood of Christ. Are we ready? Oh, we have somebody else that snuck in under the wire. Jamari, okay. <laughs> Sneaky. That's all right. Huh? Okay, she's getting changed. Hey, we don't care how they get there. You can sneak in. You can crawl. You can low crawl. You can roll if you want. I don't really care. What I care most about is that you respond. Can I just say to all who have been baptized, who have, listen, what I really wanted this sermon to be about today, because God usually takes me where he wants to go and I follow what I was thinking. Is what does it look like to live filled with the Holy Spirit? Are you living that life? Because if you have given yourself to Him, if you have repented and been baptized, then according to the promise of God's Word, you have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Whether you feel like it or not, it doesn't matter. The truth says you have Him. Amen. Don't you want to experience it? <laughs> Don't you want to feel it? Don't you want to live it out? Don't you want to? Come on. That's what we're celebrating here. It's what we celebrated when you were baptized. And it's what we're celebrating when these two are baptized. Okay, let me go back there and we'll get this. Some of you getting hungry. I know. I don't know if you can see by the camera angle that you have these two beautiful young ladies, Scott's daughters that get to witness this, who brought him here. They're evangelists. I'm going to read it one more time just because we need to hear it over and over again. Romans 6, 1 says, What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have been baptized. <laughs> Sorry. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus was baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. And that's what we've come to celebrate. Thank you for responding to God's call. As a profession of your faith, I'd like to have you repeat after me, I believe, I believe that, Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. The Son of the living God. Amen. I want to pray for you. Father, we just thank you for Scott. We thank you for his willingness and boldness to step out and step up to follow you. We pray that you would fill him with your spirit right now, that you would overtake anything that's in his life that is holding him back and set him free so that he can fully experience what it is to be filled with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Scott, it is my honor to now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for the forgiveness of sin and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. Congratulations. Yeah. Come on, Jamari. Everybody give Jamari a big hand out there. Let her hear you. <laughs> we saw how you snuck in. <laughs> Watch you step right down there. Amen. Come on. <sighs> it's our profession of faith that when we declare that we believe in Jesus, that is where 
That is where this comes from. So Jamari, as a profession of your faith, would you repeat after me? I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. I want to pray for you. Father, we just thank you for this sister, for her willingness and desire to follow you. We pray that you would fill her with, her, with your spirit, that she would just feel, be filled with boldness and power to accomplish what you've called and created her to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Jamari, it is my pleasure now to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for the forgiveness of sin and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you. All right. Help her. Thank you. All right. Well, let's all stand up. If you're with us online, you can stand up too. Let's all just take a second to praise the Lord. <laughs> Come on. For what He has done, for what He's invited us into, for what He is allowing us to experience and feel right here, right now, in this moment. We're here for Him. We're here to praise Him. We're here to worship Him. So if you're so inclined, just lift your hands out in front of you. Lord, we just ask now, because you've allowed us to, because you've made a way where there was no way, because you've made it possible and you made the promise that we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, we just ask, Lord, that we would receive a fresh new filling of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come and fill us up. Fill us with boldness and power. Fill us with hope. Fill us with destiny that you have put into us, that you have called us to. Fill us with your power, with your strength, with all that you have, Lord, so that we can go and live the life as Jesus lived, a life of miracles and signs and wonders, a life of your power following us around and being released to the world around us as we deliver the gifts that you have given us through the ultimate gift your spirit that lives in us and dwells in us. And we give your name praise because without you, we could not do any of it. It is by grace that we have been saved, but it is by faith that we will live for you. In Jesus' name and all that agreed said, amen, amen. God bless you. Thanks for coming to church, everybody. Great to have you here.